Hello and welcome to All About Community. My name is Robert L. Harris and I am your host. I was just thinking the other day how beautiful it would be for Oakland, the whole Bay Area, as a matter of fact, for the entire nation to have our young black boys out working, being creative, and just being what we dream they could be. Today we're going to talk about our kids here in Oakland. I have as my special guest a person that our audience is quite familiar with, Bishop Bob Jackson. Bishop Bob Jackson, the pastor of one of the largest church, actually the largest church here in Oakland, Acts Full Gospel Church. He not only preaches a good sermon on Sunday, but on Monday, he is in the community out there working and saving souls, especially our young black boys. Bishop, welcome to All About Community. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Glad to be here, sir. We just saw a clip on the OK program. Let's talk about the OK program, can we? Yes, sir, absolutely. The and OK, your involvement in it. I, oh, yeah. The OK program is designed to work with uh, African-American boys in middle school and uh, to uh, get a, grab onto them, work with them, hold on to them until they walk across that stage uh, graduating from high school. Now what motivated, much... what motivated you? You're a famous bishop, you, you, you really got it made, and, and yet you're out here trying to deal with these young black boys. What, what motivated you to leave the pulpit and walk out in the community? Well, because uh, our African-American boys for the most part were lost. Uh, they were they were being incarcerated at an alarming rate. They were dropping out of school. Sixty percent of our African American boys were not graduating from Oakland Public Schools. Uh, they were involved with crime, uh, burglaries, and robberies for the most part. They were going into juvenile hall, and uh, the, at that particular time, they they built juvenile hall, a new one that was going to hold, uh, be able to house rather five hundred uh, young people. Uh, I don't know if we call them inmates. Uh, call them, you know, juveniles. They were going to, they built a place for 500 out there at Fairmont. But and how uh, many in there now? But there's only 80 in there now. Only, there's wait, 80 wait, in there wait, now. Wait, 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 that's yeah, a disconnect yeah. here. Yeah. How do you get from 500 down to 80? You have an okay program. That, <laughs> okay. That's what we want to try well, to talk about Bishop, I would say that country. program is really okay. But the bad news is you can't publicize it. We can't talk a lot about it. I mean, we're, we're on our TV, and I'm thankful for you having me. But we can't talk about it because a lot of people make a living off incarcerating African-American boys. Make a living they, off of the misery of our children? Absolutely How true. How can that be? Well, because you've got, you've got lawyers, we've got courtrooms, we've got now, attorneys. Now, be nice to the lawyers. Got, no, we've got attorneys, we've got judges. We've got, I'm just saying we've got uh, JIOs, juvenile institutional officers. We have the people who do the feeding. We have counselors. We have the school. All of that involved with juvenile hall. And they all make money off of incarceration. All make money off of incarceration. All of them do. So African-American boys that are there, which are the majority, by the way, which were the majority, by the way, in Juvenile Hall in Alameda County. That now, like I said, there's only 80 boys up there now. And so they're there saying, hey, we need more kids up here. We need, we, we need more kids. And I'm saying, the devil is a lie. We don't need any more kids. No, no. Not our kids. Uh-uh, <laughs> no. And our boys, you know, they wrote them all, crack babies and all that stupid stuff. Those boys are sharp. They're smart. They're intelligent. And I'm telling you, they're going to school. They picked up their GPA. Now they're, they're, working, they're making C's and B's and higher. They're also looking forward to graduation. And they just have turned their lives around totally. And this program is a big part of what we're doing with them. Now help us understand, how did that happen? 500 and, and some intervention had to occur so that we could see those number, numbers uh, <coughs> reduced down to what, 84? 80. 80. Yeah. Just help us understand what happened out there at Juvenile Hall to make that difference. Well, we, we, we uh, asked Full Gospel Church, and I thank God for Acts Full Gospel Church because we, we, we put the money up. Our members paid money into a special fund to to supply chaplaincy services, and uh, we paid for a head chaplain and two assistant chaplains to begin to work juvenile hall because they never had any chaplaincy service, any paid chaplaincy service in juvenile hall since its inception. 
Now, when the chaplains show up at juvenile hall, typically what do they do? Well, they, they, they go in and they, they, they deal with the uh, people that are there. I call them kids. The mm -hmm. kids that they are there in juvenile actually. hall, yeah. they minister to them, they pray with them, they share with them. Because, see, we know, as Christians, we know mm -hmm. that man is comprised of three parts body, soul, and spirit. Well, for the most part, programs only deal with body and soul. They don't deal with the spiritual part of man. And these kids' spirits are broken. These kids' spirits spiritually are, are just down and, and some of them almost dead. That's why drugs and alcohol and all that stuff, you know, becomes so prevalent in our community because of dead spirits. So when we come in, we minister the Spirit of God. We minister the Word of God. We let them know what God says about them and how much God really loves them. And a lot of them, that's the first time they've ever heard that. And so introducing them to the concept of God, just to have a knowledge of God causes you to be more moral than you would be if you did not have a consciousness of God. So that's what our chaplaincy program does. We don't just get up there and talk about Bible studies, but then we begin to deal with the spiritual needs of that that kid. And we found out that a lot of them are hurting. They've, they've grown up. They didn't have a dad in their lives. They, they, they were subject to all kind of mistreatment and et cetera. And they're angry. They're upset, bitter. So the spiritual, the spirit of those kids so, have been really so damaged. So Bishop, uh, we do have to go to break. But when we come back from break, I want to talk a little bit more about that spirituality aspect of these young boys. Uh, don't uh, touch that dial. Don't touch that remote. We have to take a break. All about community. We will be right back. Mr. Jackson, uh, you're going to show us a video on the OK program. I am just dying to see it. Could you tell us what this is all but about? Don't, but don't die to see it. I want you to live. <laughs> yeah, live but if I die, it. I hope yeah. I go to heaven. And we, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we can watch it right now. We have the clip. Uh, we can watch it, I believe, right now. And welcome back to All About Community. Again, my name is Robert L. Harris. I am your host. When we went to break, we were talking rather passionately uh, with Bishop Bob Jackson about the OK Kids program right here in Oakland. We were talking about the spiritual aspect of what happens in juvenile hall when the chaplains go there to talk with these young people. And I may add that we saw a few years ago where there, we had about 500 incarcerated. Today that is down to 80. That did not happen by happenstance. That happened because of intervention. And part of that intervention dealt with spirituality. So Bishop, let's talk a little bit more about these young boys. When they are exposed to the spiritual aspect of their lives, how does that impact upon them and I would say upon their uh, desire to quit doing bad things. Yeah, let me, let me correct something first. We didn't have 500 kids in juvenile hall. I said it was built for 500. Okay. No, the well, actual, I'm glad we the, don't have 500. No, the actual number that we have is 365. Well, that's close. And it was going to be 500 at the rate it was going. So it was 365 when we came in, and it's 80 there that's now. That's a big so reduction. Praise God for that. Yeah, I just wanted to correct that. Oh, I appreciate that. it. But, but anyway, going back to your question, um, this was a concept by Don Nordcross, which you saw in the clip a little bit earlier. Don Nordcross was a deputy sheriff, and he, he, was, he, he got tired of locking up black boys. Uh, out of Sacramento. And so what he did was he prayed about it and the Lord gave him this concept to working with the OK program. And he designed the OK program for law enforcement officers to work with the boys, you see, to help them, you know, because of the situations that they found themselves in. And so he started it 20 some years ago, but today it's still alive in Oakland now. We, I found out about him in Little Rock, Arkansas, and I was able to bring him into Oakland for three years. He worked our Oakland chapter 
And so now, again, we started, you know, just from the ground, and now we have 241 boys in the program. If you put, if you add 80 to 241, you see where the 300 is. Yes. You see where they went. So we have 241 boys in the program now, and they're doing really great. Uh, they're seasoned bees and above. Their their behaviors are great. And what we do, we reward them for getting good grades. We reward them for getting for having good citizenship. And the boys respond because last year we took 48 boys to Disneyland. They'd never even been out of Oakland before. They went to Disneyland for, they went five days to Disneyland. They went to all of the trips and all the things, had a ball in a hotel, you know, eating in restaurants. They had a great time. And our sponsors paid for everything so it could make it free for the boys. Didn't have to charge them a dime. You know, they actually earned it. It wasn't that we just gave it to them. So the boys are responding greatly, uh, and, uh, and we're excited. We just got another police officer, so we have three police officers. And this is something bridging the gap between the African-American community and the police, because we have three police officers that are working the program with our boys. My goal is 500 boys this year, and that's what I'm working toward with my and third these, officer. these uh, Oakland police officers? They're real police officers, but they're not there to arrest anybody. They're there to work with those boys as a friend, as a big brother, as a surrogate father. They work with them 24 hours a day. The boys have their cell numbers. They can call them if they get into it some kind of way or if they, they have any problem, they can call those officers and they respond to them 24 hours a day. And this and, is uh, part of prevention. It is absolutely true. So that's what the police department never had done before and that's work with prevention. So for the first time, the OK program sets it up so we can get in those boys' lives before before they get into crime, before they get into trouble, and hold on to them until they walk across that stage and graduate. And I guarantee you, they're on their way to some successful life. And I'm hoping some of them will marry my grandkids. All right. right. We, they need some good men, we, some BMWs, black men We need that. Now, where is the program actually conducted? It's conducted in the West Oakland Middle School right now into McClymonds, and then into uh, from Frick uh, Middle School into Castlemont, and then now from Elmhurst, into Castlemont as well. And the so boys three, come from throughout the city, the, all the schools? They, well, they come from the West Oakland side and East Oakland, then what we call Deep East with Elmhurst, the Deep East side. So that's where they come. Where predominantly African-American boys are located. And, and I believe that a part of this uh, program involved mentors? Yes, we have 80 men, African-American men, that have signed in to be, we call them teammates. They're actually mentors. They mentor the boys. They're there. We have <coughs> sessions on Saturday at the various schools. And the men are there interacting with those boys, encouraging them, you know, and just fellowshipping with them because a lot of these boys don't have men in their life. They don't have African-American men in their lives at all. All of them have grandmother. They got mother. A lot of women in their life, even a school teacher is mm -hmm. a woman. Mm -hmm. No men in their life. So this program provides African-American male uh, mentors uh, to provide leadership for the boys and fellowship with the boys and, and able to talk with them about their problems and whatnot. So it, it's a win-win for, for the whole community. And as you can see, good things are happening with the OK program here in Oakland. But for that to continue, it needs funding. And when we come back from break, we're going to talk about some of the ways that you can help ensure through your donations this kind of a program that's helping our boys. Don't touch that dial. Don't touch that remote. We will be right back with All About Community. Hello and welcome back to All About Community. Again, my name is Robert L. Harris. I am your host. And when we went to break, uh, we were talking about uh, the OK program and how you, you can uh, become involved in helping sustain this program. It's a great program, but it will not continue without adequate resources. Uh, Bishop, uh, I believe that uh, next month, March, March 25th, there is an event to help support this. T tell us about it so that our audience will be able to hopefully support. Okay, thank you. We have our annual luncheon uh, for the OK program. It's going to be at the Hilton Hotel, uh, March 25th 
at 11 o'clock. From 11 to 3, it's going to be uh, a recognition and ceremonial rewards, kind of a luncheon where the boys will be able to come. There will be so many boys and their mother uh, and, their, and, their, and their family will be able to come and a host of people, up to 350 people, I think we have room for at the Hilton. And it's all about raising money <coughs> for the budget that we need to carry them through to the end of the year. So I'm hoping, I'm praying that we can raise $100,000 this year. And why do we have to do this? You would think with all the programs they have and with all the situations that involve African-American boys around violence and, and crime and around school dropout, that there would be plenty of money for a program like this. But believe it or not, there's nobody willing, willing to give any money for this program because there's a whole lot of people who don't want to see these African-American boys become successful. That's what I said. It seemed like this, the, the county would rather pay $200,000 to incarcerate a boy than to give him $5,000 to be in a program that's going to help him graduate from school. Anyway, we can't get any funding anywhere. One of the main reasons is we don't fit any of the RFPs that they send out to get the money, the grants that they have. They want us to write the grant according to what they want to give us the money for, but that won't make a difference in our community, and it certainly won't make a difference in our boys' life. We have something that works. We just can't get anybody to fund it, so Axville Gospel Church has taken the lead with giving money, and our sponsors that's been with us for the past uh, four years now, uh, donating to the broadcast, I mean, donating to the program and generously keeping us alive. And it's important for all community organizations to support the OK program. I believe when the boys went to Disneyland last year, you had a number of community organizations supporting them, including Sigma Pi Phi Fraternity, the yes, Boule. Sir. Yes, sir. And, and we need the other. Horizon uh, Beverages. We had Clorox. <laughs> we had a lot of the companies and, uh, and people. And I don't want to get the name and names or I'll get in trouble. But we had quite a few. I think we raised almost $40,000 uh, to me, which is not a big budget at all. But we raised $40,000, and it took us through until now. Right now, we just took them on a, a trip this past Saturday and uh, because of a step trip and the, rewarding them for good. And it was about, cost us almost $3,000 to take them on the trip. You know what I'm saying? But they had a beautiful time. We only got $1,800 left in our budget. Not enough to take us through the year. So the, the annual luncheon fundraisers are very necessary. So if, you know, you feel a tug on your heart to help us with yeah. this program, we would certainly appreciate any help we can get. And I think the thing that our audience needs, <clears throat> our audience needs to understand is that this is stopping kids from getting incarcerated in the first place. Yes. We know that once you are incarcerated and get a record and stigmatized, that could stay with you the rest of your life. But what about the young boys who never touched the criminal justice system? This program stops that from happening. So these boys will grow up to be outstanding uh, men like Bishop Jackson and many other role models we have here in the uh, Oakland uh, Bay Area. Uh, I understand you have approximately 80 mentors now and you probably need more. Tell right. us about how people can get involved, well, especially our men. We, we, we mainly get mentors from the various churches uh, throughout the, the city. Uh, and so we, we go to the churches and we ask uh, the men that are a part of the churches, because we want men with character. We don't want the men taking the boys down the wrong way. We don't want the boys, uh, you know, to be exposed to things that's going to be detrimental or negative. So we found out that for the most part, the men that are in church, the men that have a, a consciousness of God, they, they maintain uh, morality for the most part, and they're able to really <coughs> be a model, a role model for these boys. And so we've been going to the churches and getting uh, various men uh, to join up. And it's only three events per year is what you have to do, we ask you, and then to come to the kicking sessions on Saturday when you're able. So there's no force, no money involved, nothing like that. It's just a matter of coming out, interacting with the boys. Of course, we have to send you through a background check, fingerprinting and all that. We don't want anybody that's going to do something wrong, uh, ill to our boys. So you have to be checked through the you know, police department and whatnot with background checks. But other than that, uh, we welcome uh, men to come and, uh, and help us uh, to be mentors with these boys. And again, we're looking for at least 100. And uh, as I get more boys, I'm going to need more mentors. And uh, I want to 
thank God for the Oakland Police Department that's given us these officers to work in the program and they believe in preventive uh, work. Not only that, but we're bridging the, gla the gap with the African-American community and the law enforcement agency, uh, Oakland Police Department in particular, and it's causing uh, those boys to really not be afraid of police and all of the things that, you know, Black Lives Matter and all the things that you all have heard. Uh, we, we, we are hoping to not allow any more of that to go on right. in our community. And we want you to take the time to thank the Oakland Police Department for allowing these three officers to become involved in the lives of these young men. We also want you to, again, think about the funding. If you know of governmental funding, potential funding for these young, uh, for the OK program, talk to your city council people, talk to your state officials, talk to your federal uh, officials, because OK program is a kind of a program that makes a difference in our communities, and we must stand up for it. Uh, Bishop Jackson, uh, I want to thank you personally for being here and to commend you on the great work that you do, not only inside of Axful Gospel Church, but outside. I know we have some, but we need a lot more preachers like you who are willing to leave the pulpit and come out with the people and help, especially our young African-American males. Don't forget, March 25th, March 25th, the Oakland Hilton Hotel is a fundraiser for the OK Kids program. Go to the website, call the number you see on the screen so that you can support this program. Again, my name is Robert L. Harris. The program is all about community. I am your host. And remember, no matter what you do, no matter how you do it, no matter when you do it, in the final analysis, it is still all about community. Thank you for joining us.